Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to already our ninth season of Chemical TV's News Bulletins. With CCTV, we can share news and information from Chemical the Americas 2020 here in Philadelphia with you. Today's episode is all about the United States of America. This week, you can expect from us interviews with authority and industry experts, we take a deep dive into Tosca today, and as of tomorrow, sound bites from the sessions. Every day a statement of the day and a forecast for the day and also this time we have a local reporter. At Chemical the Americas 2018 in New Orleans, our local reporter and my good friend Ron Jones already sung Don't Know Much About History. Philadelphia is of course all about history. So for the best local report we can wish for, I need to use a bit of Chemcon TV magic, since I believe that the most suitable local reporter would be the distinguished gentleman on the bench over there, Mr. Benjamin Franklin. Mr. Franklin, sorry to disturb you. We're living in the year 2020. Would you like to join us for a week in Philadelphia? Of course. What a marvelous looking glass that is. That's the camera we are using to make TV programs. A TV is a kind of electric newspaper. In 2020 there are a lot of interesting new things to learn for a curious person like yourself. You are currently, by the way, at one of the educational centers of Philadelphia, the University of Pennsylvania. That you found it. To familiarize yourself a bit with Philadelphia today, I'd like to take you to the Franklin Institute, founded in honor of America's first scientist. You. The Franklin Institute is one of the oldest centers of science education and development in the USA. Today, the Institute continues its dedication to public education and creates a passion for science by offering new and exciting access to science and technology in ways that dazzles and delights the visitors, and hopefully you as well. The mission of the Franklin Institute is to inspire a passion for learning about science and technology. Learn from and share with you the many qualities of Benjamin Franklin, scientist, inventor, statesman, writer, composer, and above all, citizen of Philadelphia. Good heavens, Philadelphia has grown to a population of more than 1.5 million. Uh, that's more than twice as many as uh, London had in 1750, and that was the largest city in uh, Europe. Philadelphia at that time had 23,000 residents, and that was the largest city in the colonies. Uh, where do we go first? I suggest we go to your old neighborhood and start at the printing office. This is going to be an educational and interesting week. Also very interesting is the interview on Tosca. Please watch the highlights of the interview I had with Alex Dunn and Lynn Bergeson. Alex, EPA is in the middle of standing up a major regulatory program because of the Lautenberg update to Tosca. How have things been going? Well, I will tell you, starting a new program from scratch is, is quite an endeavor, but things have been going well. We feel like we're getting our sea legs under us. We spent the first two or three years after enactment, really through 2019, setting up the bones of the program, the regulations, the structure. Can you say what um, is coming up this year for EPA, uh, Tosca related? Well, so what's coming up is quite a bit. In March, you will see the uh, 20 draft scopes for the next 20 chemicals. So we have to scope out the conditions of use, and that, that will be, a, we want to make sure we got those right. Uh, because in June we will issue the, the final scoping documents and the conditions of use reflected in those documents trigger something in Tosca that has not been used before, it wasn't available for the first 10 chemicals, which is the concept of pause preemption. One of the goals of Tosca was to uh, calm things down when EPA was taking a look at a uh, chemical and ask states essentially to pause their activity and their regulation of those chemicals while EPA undertook its work. You will also see us later this year finishing our work on the PBTs, the persistent bioaccumulative and toxic uh, chemicals. We have uh, five of those that we will finish our risk management. We are going directly to risk management on those. Those are due under the statute in December. We're shooting to get them out a bit earlier. Okay, so that's a very long to-do list for 2020 for EPA. Mm -hmm. Lynn, what does that mean for industry? We're largely tracking everything EPA is doing. Um, the final risk evaluations that we are waiting to see on some of the first 10. Oh, I forgot to 10. mention the final risk evaluations. You know, we will be very anxious to see how EPA comes down on certain issues. The bifurcating, for example, of the conditions of use for legacy on asbestos and how that 
aligns with the final risk evaluation for conditions of use that are reviewed will be an, an interesting determination. We do have some of the chemicals the agency is you know, considering in terms of diminishing that backlog. And, and Alex, you've done a terrific job of really getting a lot of those done. So I just wanted to add on to what Lynn said about things that we do uh, four years. Tosca is turning four in June, and uh, one thing we do every four years is our chemical data reporting rule, which has impacts for many, many companies. And so that will be this uh, reporting is starting in June, and you should see the final CDR rule very soon. The complete interview can be viewed at our website and YouTube channel. And for those here in the hotel, at channel 57. Also this week we have again beautiful cartoons for our interviews, made by Roel Seidel. Also Franklin used cartoons. He was an innovator in the publishing business. So let's focus on the role of Benjamin Franklin as printer. Good day Mr. Franklin. I, Benjamin Franklin of Philadelphia, was very proud of the printing business. We printed all matter of materials from uh, books to newspapers to brochures and even currency. Funny that you mentioned banknotes. Three famous Americans and founding fathers of the United States of America are currently on banknotes. On the one US dollar bill, George Washington. On the 20 US dollar bill, Alexander Hamilton. And you are on the highest denomination, 100 US dollars. Please have a look. Ah. Oh, that is magnificent. Look at the detail on that. And, and the image is, is very, very good. And there's some phrases from our Declaration of Independence also. Uh, and a quill that we used to sign that document. Uh, the Declaration was our justification of our break from England. We call that Brexit nowadays, but that might take too long to explain. On another note, I really appreciate your eye for detail. Your bifocal glasses are still very useful. Actually, people still use them today. As an alternative, they have contact lenses, and they even use eye lasering. Ah, in the back there's an image of Independence Hall where we sign both the Declaration and our American Constitution. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Just steps from Independence Hall where you sign the Constitution is the National Constitution Center. Definitely worth a visit. You can walk among 42 life-size bronze statues of the Founding Fathers, including our Benjamin Franklin. And their freeing rising performance is also a must-visit in Philadelphia. With us in the CCTV studio for the statement of the day, Mark Herwig of UTC. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Chaired. Mark, have you ever visited the Constitution Center? Yes, I have visited the center. Um, it is a fantastic uh, set of venues, um, exhibits, uh, reflecting uh, the early days of the United States and U.S. history, um, as well as being now being part of African American History Month, um, there, there's a, a wonderful exhibit around the role of African Americans in the early days of the United States, including uh, slavery and leading up to uh, the Civil War of the United States. Starting June 1st, industry again can report their chemical data in accordance with the Tosca CDR rule. What are the main points of attention for industry? So for this reporting cycle, uh, industry is challenged with um, managing uh, annual data for a four-year period. So from 2016 to 2019, uh, industry has to evaluate manufacture and import of chemical substances. And for um, any, of those re any of those years, uh, if the volumes exceed a certain threshold, then they actually have to file reporting in 2020. Um, and then to do so, there's additional framework of information that um, uh, has to be brought to the reporting cycle from the principal reporting year, which is 2019. Uh, so managing all that information and reporting the details of that activity is, is quite a challenge for industry. And your statement is? Well, with CDR and a lot of other chemical regulatory programs, the devil is always in the details. Mark, thank you very much. Now it's time for the forecast of the day. 
This morning, more on the CDR rule in our workshop and a lot more on Tosca in our seminar that focuses on Tosca's 2020 priorities for both new and existing chemicals, with many lessons learned from the first risk evaluations. In the afternoon, a seminar on hazardous chemicals information schemes with the American TRI program and the European Poison Center notifications. And tonight, our welcome reception, which allows plenty of time to catch up with old friends and make new ones. In that respect, take heed to the words of Benjamin Franklin. Be slow in choosing a friend, slower in changing. Thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you tonight.